Hi, this is Story Wilson again, and I'm going to show you how to make an EAS serial cable. This is the kind of cable that I make and that I saw on my website. So this will allow you to make your own. Uh, I'll put the part numbers on the video. Uh, this is a simple OBD2 to open end uh, cable assembly that, that you can purchase. Um, I believe it's somewhere around $12 a unit. Uh, this is just a, a DB9 female connector. And here's the clamshell for it. And we got some little heat shrink tube in here that we're gonna uh, we're gonna seal everything up with. Here's the DB9 female connector. I've just got it very very lightly gripped in a pair of vice grips here. And if you have a an actual pair of uh, clips or something that'll hold it there, that's good. We're just gonna go ahead and put some solder in uh, the uh, receptacles here for pins two, pins three, pin five, and pin seven. So here's our pre-made OBD2 connector and wiring assembly. comes like this and what you're going to need to do when you receive yours is you're going to need to get a multimeter and put on the continuity function and test out and find pins 1, pins 5, pins 11 and 12 and you want to trace those pins back to the actual wire code. Now I'm going to go ahead and do that uh, already for this video but you need to do it yourself on what, whatever cable you, you decide to purchase because the color code can be different so don't go off the color code I use verify it for yourself okay as I said before I used a continuity meter to test each one of these wires back to the proper pin on the OBD2 port and again I'll post some kind of schematic for you but we're going to take each and I've also put a little bit of uh, heat shrink tubing on each one we're going to take each wire and take our soldering iron and we're just simply going to touch it and slide it into the receptacle and let it uh, let it cool down. I'm going to do that for each one of these four. Just like that. We've gone ahead and soldered each one of the wires in. You'll notice nice clean solder joints. You know, the wire actually slides into the receptacle on the back of the plug there. And it's pins two, three, five, and seven. And then we just uh, slide the heat shrink tubing into place and uh, I usually take a match or a lighter and just kind of touch it to, to the flame and it'll shrink that up. So I went ahead and uh, put heat on the shrink tubing. It's all done up. I'm just going to twist these together. Make it a little bit shorter so it fits into the uh, clamshell. Nice little, nice little assembly there. I usually put a little loop in it. Just like that. And then we're going to assemble the clamshell careful these little screws go all over the place I uh, simply kind of work it in here press it in make sure it's not really strained at all there we go put the uh, put the little screws in that hold it good assemble the top part of the clamshell push it down everything's in place and then we just go ahead and uh, put the little screws in So here's the completed cable. Um, I highly recommend either making yourself one of this quality or purchasing one. Um, you know, it's nice to have a durable cable that you know is going to work over and over again. It's nice to have a cable where you know the pins aren't going to be falling out or moving around or breaking on you. Uh, and it's just, you know, over time if you want to do some EAS troubleshooting, you, you want to make sure that there, your problem isn't due to your cable. You know, if you do have a problem with with the, with the communication sequence, the last thing you want to have to do is keep you know is have your cable being suspect. Uh, I highly highly recommend using the part numbers that I list. Um, with these connectors, the actual pin numbers are on the face and also on the back side. The pin numbers are on the face of this as well, so it makes the whole uh, construction process much more straightforward and much easier. So um, go ahead and go over the schematics and be careful and ask questions.